Well, the question this evening is one that's from the, the Bible. Uh, we're going to read it. A man asked, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And so we want to read this story of the Ethiopian eunuch. It's found in Acts in chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Verse 26, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia and eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth? And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Increasingly, I speak to people and the conversation goes something like this. Are you a Christian? The answer is yes. And when did you become a Christian? Well, I, I was baptised as a child. That's when I become a Christian. Maybe baptised as a baby. Or maybe I was baptised when I was 12. And the worrying thing to me, it seems, is this. That there are people out there in this world, maybe you're one of them listening. And they are looking upon their baptism as a means of salvation. They are depending on their baptism to get them to heaven. Now could I say, before we just look at this in a little bit of detail, nowhere will you find in this book that baptism is the way to heaven. I hear you say, what about Mark 16 and verse 16? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And I say to you, the second part of this verse says, He that believeth not shall be damned. Which part do you take? He that believeth and is baptized? If you just took that in isolation, you could say it means you must be baptized to be saved. If you take the second part of the verse, well, it just says that as long as you believe, you'll not be damned in hell, you'll be saved. Now, really what that teaches us is this. It's just that we must interpret the Bible in its context, its proper context. Because, for instance, the word baptism, which is a Greek word, baptizo, which really means to submerge or immerse in water. That can refer to something that is physical. That's what we're going to look at this evening. Or it can refer to something spiritual. You remember John uh, the Baptist, he said, I baptize you with water, but there cometh one after me who will baptize you with the Spirit. So there's the two aspects. And so we must interpret the Bible in context. But we are going to see that salvation is found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that baptism comes after salvation, symbolizing the change that has taken place. And therefore we must come to scripture and see, first of all, I want to look at the origin of baptism. Who was it said that we should baptize? Well, very simply, 
It's the word of God. God says that we should be baptised. More than that, the Lord Jesus Christ commanded it in the Gospels. He said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptising in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Ghost. And so it is a commandment of God. It is done in the name of God. So baptism is a serious thing. It's not done in the name of the church. It's not done in the name of a minister. It's not done in the name of a baby being born. No, it's done and baptised in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And you and I know that no man cometh unto the Father except through the Son, because that's what Jesus Christ said. And so Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the way to God is not through baptism. No, it's first through Jesus Christ. And we're going to see why. So Jesus Christ commanded it. Number three, the apostles practiced it. We have read an example of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch and how he asked this question after he had been saved, after he was born again. See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And both of them went down into the water and Philip baptized the eunuch and he went his way rejoicing. And we could quote you and read to you countless other examples. I encourage you to read through the word of God, search for the word baptism and you will see believers baptism as we call it. It is something that was practiced and there are many examples of people doing it. So its origin is in the word of God. But then we come to the order of baptism. And we would ask, really, not only who said that we should be baptised, but who should be baptised. That's very important. Because there were some that you would speak to and they say, well, you know, a baby should be baptised. Christened. But, you know, when we come to the Bible, we never read of a baby being baptised. You'll never find that. And there's no such thing as baptismal regeneration. That somehow the baptism of a baby will safeguard it. No, we believe that every person born into this world is conceived in sin and needs a saviour. And baptism is not something that is practised on an infant. And baptism is not some sprinkling ceremony of a baby. You will never find that. You might find it in some of the uh, religious institutions around about. And you might see pictures of it, a baby being held in a nice white garment and somebody sprinkling water over them. Well, they can do that to their heart's content, but they'll never find it in this book. See, the Bible is the authority for everything that we do. No, when we come to the Bible, we see very clearly from this portion in Acts that it's somebody who is saved that is baptised. Why? Because when we look at what baptism is, and when we understand the significance of baptism, we realise that it must follow salvation. Why? Because the person I was speaking to just recently who mentioned this very fact that they became a Christian when they were baptised, went on to say this, when I was baptised, my sins were washed away. In other words, the confusion that had come in was this. Now they thought the water had some cleansing power as far as their sins were concerned. Now you and I know that it's our sins keep us out of heaven. But could I ask you, what's God's answer in the word of God to our sins? I can't find anywhere in the Bible that it says that water is the answer. So you could bathe to your heart's content in water, in the cleanest river you can find, in the filtered water, but you'll never wash your sins away. No. No, when we come to the matter of sin, you know fine well it demanded Christ and a sacrifice upon the cross that was sinless. And says 1 John 1 and 7, the blood of Christ 
His Son, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. In other words, our sins are cleansed and our sins are forgiven the moment we put our faith in Christ. Why? Because we're putting our faith in one who offered a sacrifice without spot. It's Christ and his death that takes care of our sins. But when we come to baptism and we read through the book of Romans, we discover this, that the moment we are saved, then in baptism we are identifying with Christ in his death. And we are identifying with the change that took place through his death. And really we are identifying with Christ not only who died but was buried and who rose again the third day and therefore going into the water is identifying with him in his death and burial. When a person comes out of the waters of baptism, they are publicly declaring to the world that they are risen with Christ to walk in newness of life. The water hasn't done anything or changed them. You're just the same person you were when you come out of the water as you were when you went in. No, your sins were forgiven because of Calvary. But what you're doing is publicly declaring to the world that I am now a follower of Christ. I am a Christian. I am saved. And it's something that makes a change, salvation. Why does it make a change? Because Roman 8, Romans 8 tells me that if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The moment we are saved, the Holy Spirit enters. I am born of God and therefore there is a change. Mind you, it was a big thing for people in the first century to identify with Christ publicly in baptism. Can you imagine going down to the river, living in the middle of a Roman colony that had allegiance to Caesar, and hear somebody going into the river, and they're saying, my allegiance is first and foremost to Christ. What was that person doing going under the water and coming out? Why are all the people watching, watching? Oh, did you not know that's a person who has put their faith and trust in Christ and they're telling the world that the Lord Jesus Christ is their Lord and Master. That could mean certain death for some people. I wonder, is it why you're holding back? Number one, from being saved. You're afraid of what people might think. You know with the gospel and with Jesus Christ there's a reproach because you can't have the world in Christ. And the friends that you have now, you might have to just turn away from them. Because you know they'll not have the same interests as you have when you take allegiance with Jesus Christ. I wonder is there someone and you could sing with the hymn writer, My old companions fare you well. I will not go with you to hell. I mean, mean with Jesus Christ to dwell. Maybe I'm also talking to someone and you've never been baptised. You're saved. And you're thinking, what's the need for me to be baptised? Well, it's just this. This is the third point. It's not only something that originates in the Word of God. It's not only something that takes its order from the Word of God, but it's also obedience to the Word of God. And don't let anybody try and coax you into just saying it doesn't matter. And do not let anybody try and tell you the lie that if you're baptised, then that means you'll have to really change the way you live. No, that should have already taken place. But I wonder, is it just that you have not yet obeyed God in being baptised? Obey the Lord Jesus in baptism. Wouldn't it just be lovely to be able to obey him, considering all that he's done for you upon the cross? Obedience to God's word identification with Christ publicly. Well, someone says, how often should a person be baptised? Well, the Bible makes it very clear that baptism just takes place once. Why? Because a person is only saved once. Because once you're saved, you're secure. The only reason and circumstances a person might be baptised a second time is if they discover that they never were saved. You know, it does none of us any harm just to go round the foundations. You know, there's a woman one time, she's been questioned by a godly man with regard to her salvation. And you know, he was, he was probing her. When were you saved? How were you saved? If you die, where will you be? Are you sure you'll be in heaven? Do you know what she said to him? She said, sir, probe me well, because it's for eternity. None of us should have any fear about somebody probing us with regard to our salvation. Why? Because it's for eternity. 
That's why we need to be sure that we're depending on salvation. Because I'm awful worried that there's some people and they're depending on baptism. I come back to it just before I finish because it's the burden really of my message. And it's this. I was talking to a man. I had coffee with him. Very nice man. And you know, he had swallowed this awful doctrine. That baptism was essential for salvation. Believe and be baptised. And scripture after scripture taken out of context. Do you know the seriousness of it is this. When I probed that man and I asked him this question. Is the work of Christ enough to save your soul? He said no. And furthermore, he had no answer. When we followed through his theory, he had no answer when we followed through his wrong doctrine and practice because, my friend, there's no hope for a soul who is dying at the side of the road and who wants to be saved if you have to tell that person that they need to be baptised. A person lying in a hospital bed and they've only hours to live and they discover that they need to be saved like the thief on the cross. Do you mean to tell me there's no salvation for that person? Oh, a thousand times there is because Christ died. A person that there's no possibility of them ever going into the waters of baptism. My friend, God is prepared to save that person on account of the blood of Christ because we don't limit the sacrifice, but we glory in this fact that God has given us a symbolic institution that so beautifully and publicly symbolizes and demonstrates the truth of what happened at the cross. And isn't it wonderful that he's given something that can be, uh, it can be facilitated throughout the world, irrespective of language, irrespective of culture or where a person is. They can find water. They can go down into it like this eunuch. See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And the both of them went down into the water. That shows that it wasn't just that he sprinkled the eunuch. No, they went into the water and he went under the water and he came out of the water and he went his way. Went on his way rejoicing. You know, it's a joyful thing. I remember the night I was baptised. It was a joyful occasion as people gathered. But you know, what was really joyful was just this, to know that it was obeying the word of God. To know that we were obeying just the, the word of God and that, I wonder, are you baptised? If you're saved and you're not baptised, you should be baptised. And I encourage you just to read the Bible and look out for the origin. Just admire the order. Just see that it would be good for you to be obedient to the word of God. And you'll only have to do it once. My friend, what doth hinder me to be baptised? Baptised. And on the way to heaven. Thank God for the scriptures that tell us not only how to be saved, but tell us how to tell the world that we are saved and publicly take sides with Jesus Christ and you'll never regret it. Thank you for listening and may God bless you.